grace to you and peace from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At our most recent deacons meeting, where we get together with the deacons and talk about all kinds of things, we talked about these readings for today. And it was a really good conversation because they're not the easiest of readings to preach on, and so it was fun to hear what a bunch of different people thought about these readings. And one of the, the discussions that was brought up was that these readings contain riddles. There's riddles in all of these readings. And so it got me thinking about the last few weeks on Facebook, because there's been some riddles going around on Facebook. I don't know, have some of you seen this, the giraffe riddles that been, the people have been posting giraffe pictures and the riddles have been going around to see if you have not. They were all over my Facebook page for a while. My friends must have been into it, I don't know. But the idea was this, there was this riddle going around. And the idea was, if you got the riddle wrong, you had to change your little profile picture to a giraffe. I don't know why, that's just the way it was. So if you got it right, you were okay, but if you got it wrong, you had to change your picture to a giraffe. And that was sort of the symbol, of like, I got it wrong, I'm in the wrong. So this was the riddle that went around the first week that sort of started this whole thing. It's 3 a.m. The doorbell rings and you wake up. Unexpected visitors. It's your parents, and they're here for breakfast. You have strawberry jam, honey, wine, bread, and cheese. What is the first thing you open. <laughs> All right, so I've heard it, the door, or there's been an argument. The other answer that people have given is your eyes. First thing you open. Now, there's an argument because in the riddle it says you're already awake. See, Pastor Jeff doesn't like that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so your eyes are the door. The one that went around this week, which wasn't nearly as popular, but they're apparently putting out riddles every week now. Um, the new one from this past week, which I did get right, I was very excited, um, <laughs> goes like this. If a giraffe were to walk into the jungle, how far could it walk? Halfway, that's it. I know, they don't live in the jungle, I didn't understand. Giraffes live on the Sahara. <laughs> because it, if you missed it, you go halfway. Once you're halfway in, then you're walking out. Okay? All right. <laughs> People are still confused. <laughs> a riddle, <laughs> but that's what a riddle's about. A riddle is a mystifying, misleading, puzzling question posed as a problem that needs solved or an answer that needs guessed. Oftentimes, there's a trick if you're dealing with a riddle, something that makes it easy to get tripped up or to confuse you. And then when you get it wrong, if you're playing on Facebook, you become a giraffe. To get the answer wrong, to fail, to mess up, that giraffe is kind of like an emblem of our shame. In some ways, it's kind of like a death, failing to answer correctly, to see the trick, or to best the questioner. Our readings today are full of riddles. Job is a reading of hope, but there are those few things that don't make sense in what he says. The most confusing is the verse where it says, After my skin has thus been destroyed, then in my flesh I will see God. After his body is destroyed and he's dead, then in his flesh he'll see God? What? What is going on there? Even scholars don't know what Job is trying to say in that particular verse. Every Bible I checked in had a note attached to, to that verse. And the note said, the meaning of the Hebrew is uncertain. Which, <laughs> which is a nice way of saying, we're a giraffe. We totally made up this translation. We have no idea what this is really saying. We're dead in the water. We made it up. I mean, they took a good guess, but they don't know. It's a riddle. It's a puzzling, mysterious problem. And then there's our gospel reading, where the Sadducees create this riddle to try and trap Jesus. 
They concoct this story about this woman and her husband and his family to try and trick Jesus into agreeing with them about the resurrection. Now remember, to the Sadducees, dead is dead. There is no life after death. And so they tell this crazy, comical story centered around this woman that one commentary I read described as a serial widow, forced to marry brother after brother after brother in hopes of having a child. And the Sadducees challenge Jesus with this riddle and then sit back to watch and see, what will he do? Will, what will he say about death and resurrection? Who will he side with? Will he fail to answer at all? Will he maybe be a giraffe? But Jesus is not a giraffe. Jesus takes that difficult, tricky question, and he does something amazing with it. The Sadducees are looking to stump Jesus with this story that's based on the law that they follow. But they've twisted that law so much, they've come up with an absurd way to talk about it. They have, in essence, shown in some ways the rotting, decaying, dying side of the law. To them, that says dead is dead. But Jesus takes their trick question and turns it around with truth. Jesus takes the law that they are quoting and instead talks about life. Jesus answers the Sadducees in three ways. He actually answers three questions, two of which they sort of ask and one which they don't. First, he answers their question about marriage and resurrection, which is the surface question. And he says, people will not marry or be given in marriage in the resurrection. So he answers their question. Then he answers their real question, which is, does, which is, does he believe in the resurrection or not? And he says, Moses clearly proves that the dead are raised to life. Jesus says, yes, there is resurrection. And then he goes one step beyond their question. And he refocuses them on truth and on life. Jesus says, God is a God of the living, not of the dead. For to him, all are alive. Jesus tells the Sadducees, Dead is not dead. In God, dead is alive. Wow. Think about that. In God, dead is alive. Isn't that amazing? We have places in our lives where we have things that are dead or dying as a part of our existence. It might be a relationship we're involved in that's withered in some way, where we can't stand to be around someone anymore, or where we find a cold shoulder when we try and reach out. Perhaps we see death in our own actions. We notice that we have hurt others or ourselves, that we can't even live up to our own expectations for ourselves, let alone God's expectations. Maybe the death in our lives is a real physical death. Perhaps we face the disintegration of our body through age or disease, or we know someone that is facing death. There are so many ways in our lives where we are faced with death in one way or another. Places where we can see our life crumbling in certain places where we watch as something good rots and decays, and we can do nothing to stop it. But Jesus answers the Sadducees' decaying questions and dying belief with words of hope for them and for us. God is not a God of the dead, but a God of the living. God is the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, men who had died 
long, long ago. But God is their God, and God is a God of the living. And so God must have made them alive. God is in the business of making what is dead alive. God is in the business of restoring the withering, rotting, dead things of our world to their resurrected, life-filled may also kind of be the answer to our riddle in Job. That even though Job is dying in some ways, God is the God of the living. Job has this amazing hope that he will stand before God in his flesh, alive, even after he's dead. Because in God, the dead are made alive. God is about raising the dead bringing life in the midst of death. And Job puts all of his hope and his dying flesh in the arms of that promise. God, the dead things of our world are made alive. Dead is not dead. Dead is made alive in God. The promise was for the Sadducees and the disciples and Job and for us. All those places where we see death, where we experience dying in our lives, or in the lives of those we love, or in our world. We are promised that God is working to bring resurrection, life, and wholeness where it never existed before. It may seem kind of like a silly example, But even in that Facebook riddle we were talking about earlier, there's a good example of life out of death. We were talking about you get the riddle wrong, you put the giraffe up, it's kind of like a death, you failed, you did it wrong, you got the answer wrong. But then there was this amazing community that grew up around this action of guessing the riddle and putting up the giraffe. There was conversation generated about what the real answer was. There was laughter and condolences when you got it wrong. There was this effort to find the best or the most amusing giraffe picture to make your picture. There was all this energy that grew up around this act of guessing and answering and getting it wrong. Life grew out of the shame and the death associated with those giraffes. Jesus is not a giraffe today in our story. He is not stumped by tricky questions and puzzling riddles that come from those sad things. Instead, Jesus brings truth and wholeness and life into their decaying, dying questions. God can take our dying, rotting, lost places, those places of death where we have lost all hope of life and God can bring resurrection. God can resurrect them in new and beautiful ways. God is a God of the living. In him all are alive. In God the dead are made alive. There is resurrection.